Hi everyone, my name is Natasha from Love's Cure Ministries. Thank you for joining me for another video for my series, Believers Beware. Today I'll be discussing five reasons believers should stop celebrating Christmas. So let's get started. Number one, Leviticus chapter 23. The feasts of the Lord are a mandate from God that prophetically points to our Messiah, Yeshua. They are to be kept by Israel throughout our generations. But who are the people called Israel? In scripture, God is referring to the ancient Israelites who through the blood of their lineage continue in our modern times to keep the feasts, and also spiritual Israelites who are non-Jewish believers and grafted into the tree by the blood of Yeshua. Two people groups who have become Ehad, unified and one through the blood of our Messiah. Having a revelation of Yeshua Messianic believers, both Jew and non-Jew, are joined as one new man, the body and bride of Christ, to worship, honor, and praise him, fellowshipping with him forever and ever in his kingdom. This understanding can only come by the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher of all things, past, present, and future. God says, by his prophecy, you will know that he is the one and only God above all. Number two, Jeremiah chapter 10, Idols and the True God. Let's read the key verse from chapter 10. In verse 2 which says thus says the Lord do not learn the way of the Gentiles do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven for the Gentiles are dismayed at them there are two articles entitled winter solstice Christmas star when to look up in New Jersey and another talking about the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction on winter solstice. I've left the link for these articles in the description box below. Christmas is a pagan traditional holiday, accepted into the Catholic religion, which has been carried over in Christianity, stemming from Germanic Wiccan rituals and traditions. The church in Rome began formally celebrating Christmas on December 25th in the year 336. During the reign of the Emperor Constantine, as Constantine had made Christianity the effective religion of the empire, some have speculated that choosing this date had the political motive of weakening the established pagan celebrations. Number three, Jeremiah chapter 10, key verse three. And the scripture goes on to say, For the customs of the peoples are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers, so that it will not topple. You can Google the words Wiccan Christmas and see the similarities of church traditions for Christmas and Germanic traditions. Yeshua came into the world as a Jew. We are to acknowledge and remember him through his example. We are a unique people called out from among them, so why would we as believers and followers of Yeshua 
take our eyes off him to give time and attention to man's traditions. Number four, Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. Christmas is a celebration of blasphemy. And here we read of this in these two verses. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. What are these verses saying? Man has and will continue to speak against Yeshua in the image of man. You can and will be forgiven of this sin and form of blasphemy if you humbly come before the throne of God and ask forgiveness with an open, willing heart. However, those who speak against him in his deity, in his God form in the spirit, will not be forgiven. Christmas is not only the winter solstice, but the birthday celebration and worship of Tammuz, the pagan god, who has many names in different cultures, all stemming from the demonic worship and acknowledgement of Baal. For more information on this, you can check out the link to the Love's Cure Ministries video. Um, it's one of the Did You Know series video number five, Christmas, the Pagan Holiday. I'll leave that link as well in the description box so you can check it out for yourself and see some additional information on this. Number five, Isaiah chapter 56, Salvation for the Gentiles. This passage is very important and I encourage every single believer, both Jew and non-Jew, to read it and see that there is no mention of the world's holidays because they do not point back to Yeshua. Instead, it talks about Sabbath keeping. And if you are familiar with Sabbath keeping, then you will see that in it pointing to the remembrance of Yeshua and the work that our Father has done with the Word who is His Son in the beginning, who is with Him, it points back to His feast. And therefore, we should be honoring the Father and the Son. We cannot have one without the other. I talk about this all of the time. We have to be able to recognize that as much as it is about our Messiah, it is just as much about our Father in heaven, our Creator, His Father, who He obeys. And through His example, He has shown us how to be obedient to our Father, because in doing that, we not only honor Him, but we honor His Son because we will be keeping his word to remember and acknowledge the finished work of Yeshua and his sacrifice, which is the seal of the covenant that God made with himself, extending his own mighty and powerful arm for our sake. His unwavering and faithful love, his tender mercies, which has fallen upon the world and his children. But that grace will not last because in his great day, we will all stand before his throne and the books will be opened. And if you truly love the Lord our God, 
your work will testify to the things that you have done in this life. And by his love and grace, I pray that all of our names may be listed in the Lamb's Book of Life so we may reign with him during his millennial reign and forever and ever according to his will. And finally, it is important to take heed to the prophetic messages in Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 17 through 25. Those who do not seek the Lord, they shall not prosper. This is a direct indication that prospering in the Lord is to be near to him. For to be far from him is to be lost and in darkness. It is an opportunity to be handed over to your own mind and therefore perish because of a lack of knowledge. This would be due to the unwillingness in the heart to be open to God's instruction, which is his law, his teachings, his light. If you say his law is done away with, then you have done away with his light in your life. And then you can only be left with and in darkness. Instead, take a lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 1. Have faith in Yeshua, standing and proclaiming his goodness through the heritage the Father has given to his people to acknowledge and celebrate in remembrance of his Son, our Messiah. That is our mark. That is our sign. And that is our seal of the covenant of our faithful God whose word never fails. His word never returns void and his word is never going to be done away with. For his word is Yeshua who was with his father in the beginning and will be standing and reigning in the end. I pray that you will take heed to this understanding. May the Lord lead you through his Holy Spirit according to his will. And remember, according to 2 Timothy chapter 1, be loyal to the faith. Don't celebrate the world's holidays, but remember the Lord's holy days, which prophetically point to Yeshua HaMashiach. Until next time. Bye, friends.